In a world where freedom of worship is often just a distant dream, the story of persecuted Christians unfolds as a narrative of courage, faith, and resilience. Just imagine, at every corner of history, there are men and women who, armed only with their belief, face unimaginable adversities. What kind of strength can lead someone to risk everything for their faith? And what if I told you that in places where the light of hope seems to fade, stories arise that defy logic and warm the heart? While some live in comfort, others, with unwavering courage, stand up against oppression. It is easy to forget that behind every statistic, there is a human being, a life marked by challenges and often profound sacrifice. How do these people keep their faith unshaken? What can we learn from their experiences? As we move forward, prepare for a journey that goes beyond what you imagine, revealing the indomitable strength of those who, even in the darkness, cling to the light of truth. Don't blink, because the next story might be the most impactful you've ever heard. Origin of Christian Persecution The early decades of Christianity were marked by a climate of uncertainty and fear, especially within the context of the Roman Empire. Christians, who stood out for their distinct beliefs and their refusal to worship Roman gods, soon became targets of hostility. Figures like Nero, who ruled from 54 to 68 AD, were responsible for some of the earliest and most brutal persecutions. Nero, in a moment of crisis, sought a scapegoat and thus blamed the Christians for the Great Fire of Rome in 64 AD. This act initiated a series of tortures and executions, creating a pattern of oppression that would become common in the following decades. Over time, other emperors, such as Diocletian, also joined this wave of persecutions. Diocletian, who ruled from 284 to 305 AD, launched one of the most severe campaigns against Christians, determined to restore order and ancient Roman religiosity. This persecution was not just a matter of religious intolerance, but also an attempt to consolidate power and social cohesion in an empire in crisis. Christianity, with its message of equality and the promise of eternal life, challenged the social and political norms of the time, becoming a target for those seeking control. In addition to imperial orders, the popular culture of the time also fueled hostility against Christians. Many Romans viewed Christians as a secret sect whose practices and rituals were misunderstood and often distorted. Christians were accused of cannibalism because of the Eucharist and disloyalty to the emperor as they refused to participate in pagan ceremonies. This combination of factors led to widespread persecutions, creating a vicious cycle of fear and repression. The persecutions were often brutal and varied in their forms, from imprisonments and tortures to public executions. These events not only affected the lives of Christians, but also shaped the identity of the Christian community. The resistance to these oppressions and the determination to maintain their faith became central pillars of early Christian identity. Thus, even in the face of adversity, many Christians found strength in their belief, which, paradoxically, ended up strengthening the spread of Christianity. Finally, understanding the origin of Christian persecution is essential to comprehend not only the history of the church, but also how beliefs can be challenged in contexts of intolerance. This narrative of oppression shaped the faith and practices of Christians who, even under intense suffering, managed to preserve their convictions and spread across various regions of the empire. Religious and Political Motivations the persecution of Christians in the Roman Empire cannot be understood solely as a religious conflict. It was deeply intertwined with political and social issues. The resistance to paganism, for instance, was one of the main factors that led Roman rulers to see Christians as a threat. Christians not only rejected Roman gods, but also challenged the social norms that upheld the structure of the empire. This refusal to participate in traditional religious practices was interpreted as an act of rebellion, generating distrust and hostility. Furthermore, political loyalty was a critical issue. For the Romans, worshipping the emperor and the city's gods was a way to demonstrate loyalty to the state. Christians, by refusing to worship idols and participate in public rituals, were seen as disloyal and treacherous. This perception not only justified repression, but also fueled resentment among the general population, who often viewed Christians as outsiders threatening social stability. 
The quest for social control also played a significant role in the persecutions. The Roman Empire faced a series of crises, including revolts, wars, and political instability. In times of uncertainty, authorities sought to unify the population around a common identity, often manifested in religion. Christians, with their exclusive doctrines and separation from pagan practices, became a convenient target to divert attention from other problems and reinforce government control. Persecutions were also a way to demonstrate power. By punishing Christians, emperors sent a clear message that any deviation from established norms would not be tolerated. This display of strength was a way to reaffirm the state's authority and deter other groups from challenging the system. Thus, oppression became a tool of social control, maintaining order in a vast and diverse empire. Finally, the religious and political motivations behind Christian persecutions reveal the complexity of the relationship between faith and power. While Christians strove to live according to their beliefs, Roman authorities saw this faith as a threat not only to traditional religion, but to the very structure of the empire. This dynamic of resistance and repression would continue to shape the history of Christianity for centuries. Martyrdom and its impacts The concept of martyrdom in the Christian tradition is deeply significant and represents one of the most powerful aspects of the Christian faith. For early Christians, martyrdom was not just an act of suffering, but a form of witnessing their belief in Christ. Many martyrs, such as Saint Stephen, the first Christian martyr, and Saint Peter, who, according to tradition, was crucified upside down, became symbols of unwavering faith. These stories of sacrifice resonated deeply within the Christian community, inspiring others to persevere in their beliefs even in the face of death. Martyrdom also played a crucial role in the spread of Christianity. The stories of martyrs were often told and retold, spreading as examples of courage and devotion. The willingness to suffer and even die for their beliefs impressed many and led to greater adherence to Christianity. Martyrdom became a form of evangelization where the testimony of a life dedicated to Christ was manifested through the acceptance of death in the name of faith. Moreover, martyrdom generated a sense of identity and cohesion among Christians. Seeing their fellow believers suffer and die for their beliefs, Christians united even more in their communities, strengthening bonds and promoting a culture of mutual support. The narratives of martyrs helped solidify the Christian identity in a world that often rejected it. This solidarity was essential in times of persecution, as it provided a safe space for faith to flourish. The impact of martyrdom on Christian tradition is also reflected in liturgical practices and Christian art. The celebration of feasts in honor of martyrs, such as All Saints Day, and the depiction of their stories in icons and paintings helped perpetuate the memory of these individuals and the importance of their devotion. These visual and ceremonial representations not only educated the faithful about the history of faith, but also encouraged the emulation of the virtues of martyrs. Finally, martyrdom is not just a chapter in Christian history, but a central element that shapes contemporary spirituality and practice. The memory of the martyrs continues to inspire people around the world, reminding them of the importance of defending their beliefs and the strength that can be found in faith. Thus, martyrdom transcends time and space, echoing in the lives of Christians who, even today, face persecutions and challenges for their beliefs persecutions in different eras and regions. Throughout history, persecutions against Christians have not been an isolated phenomenon, but rather a pattern that repeated in different eras and regions. From the early days of the church, when Christians were seen as a threat to the Roman Empire, to more recent periods such as the religious wars in Europe, the Christian faith has faced immense challenges. What many may not know is that even during the Middle Ages, the Catholic Church, on some occasions, actively participated in the persecution of heretics, demonstrating that intolerance can arise from any side. In the 16th century, the Protestant Reformation brought new conflicts to the fore. With the rise of leaders like Martin Luther, many Christians began to question the authority of the Catholic Church. This did not go unnoticed, and mass persecutions, such as those that occurred during the Inquisition, showed that the struggle for faith could be bloody. The tensions between Catholics and Protestants resulted in devastating wars, such as the Thirty Years' War, which left a trail of destruction and suffering across the European continent. 
Moving to modern times, the persecution of Christians has not diminished. In many countries, especially where Islam or other religions dominate, Christians live in constant fear. Reports of Christian communities being attacked, churches being destroyed, and believers being persecuted are increasingly common. These events highlight the need to remember that faith can be a target of intolerance anywhere in the world. Furthermore, persecutions are not limited to organized groups or governments. In various regions, intolerance can arise from ethnic or cultural conflicts that see Christians as others. This generates a cycle of violence and oppression that is often difficult to break. The tensions between different religious groups reflect the social and political complexities that shape societies. Finally, understanding the various persecutions throughout history is crucial to appreciating the resilience of the Christian faith. Each period of oppression brought not only suffering, but also the opportunity to strengthen the community and revive faith. The stories of past persecutions serve as reminders that even in the face of adversity, many communities manage to persevere. The Resilience of the Christian Community the resilience of the Christian community is a powerful testament to the strength of human faith. In times of intense oppression, many Christians found ways to keep their beliefs alive, even in the face of great challenges. In various stories of martyrs, for example, we have accounts of people who, even knowing they could be persecuted or even killed, chose to remain steadfast in their faith. This courage is a hallmark of the Christian community and continues to inspire many today. In hostile environments, Christian communities learn to gather in small groups, often in secret, to worship and share the Word of God. These clandestine meetings were not only a way to keep the faith alive, they also created strong bonds among community members. Unity around faith became a source of strength, allowing Christians to face oppression more effectively and in solidarity. Furthermore, the resilience of the Christian community can also be seen in how Christians adapted to different cultural contexts. In many cases, they not only survived but thrived, finding ways to integrate their faith practices with local traditions. This led to mutual enrichment, where local culture and Christian faith intertwined, creating a new expression of religiosity that challenged norms of oppression. Education and social engagement also played crucial roles in the resilience of the Christian community. By establishing schools, hospitals, and other institutions, Christians in various parts of the world sought not only to care for their own communities, but also to contribute to the general welfare of society. This not only helped gain respect, but also protected their communities from greater persecution. Finally, the resilience of the Christian community is a testament to the fact that even in the most difficult circumstances, faith can flourish. Stories of resistance and perseverance are a source of inspiration for many, showing that regardless of adversities, the pursuit of a life of faith and community can lead to overcoming and hope. Persecution and Human Rights when we talk about historical persecutions, we cannot overlook the connection with the contemporary struggle for human rights. Over the centuries, persecutions against Christians and other religious minorities have raised crucial questions about human dignity and freedom of belief. In many countries, religious oppression persists and individuals' rights are often ignored in the name of ideologies or political regimes. Thus, the history of Christian persecution is not just a narrative of the past, it resonates strongly in current discussions about human rights. A clear example of this relationship is the situation of Christians in countries where they are a minority, such as parts of the Middle East and Asia. In these places, religious freedom is often curtailed, leading to discrimination, violence, and even death. The history of Christian persecution becomes a warning about the need to protect the rights of all individuals, regardless of their beliefs. The struggle for religious freedom is a larger struggle for dignity and universal human rights. Furthermore, the narrative of persecution is not limited to isolated events. It intersects with struggles for equality and social justice. International organizations and human rights groups often cite religious persecution as an example of injustice that must be combated. This intersection between the history of Christian persecutions and the current fight for human rights teaches us that while some groups continue to be oppressed, solidarity and the defense of everyone's rights are fundamental for a more just world. 
Additionally, the documentation and dissemination of persecution stories play an important role in raising awareness about human rights. When the experiences of persecuted Christians are shared, whether through reports, books, or documentaries, it helps to sensitize public opinion and pressure governments to act. Telling these stories is not just an exercise in memory, it is a call to action aimed at ensuring that such atrocities are not repeated. Finally, the fight for human rights and the history of Christian persecution remind us that vigilance is essential. It is necessary to be alert to the injustices that persist and ensure that freedom of belief is respected. The past teaches us, but it is our duty to apply these lessons in the present and future. Representation in Culture and Media the way Christian persecution is portrayed in culture and media has a significant impact on the public perception of the Christian faith. Films, books, and other forms of art often explore themes of martyrdom, faith, and resistance, offering a window into the experiences of persecuted Christians throughout history. This representation not only helps educate the public about the reality of persecutions, but also humanizes the victims, bringing their stories to light. Cinema, for example, has proven to be a powerful tool for depicting the struggle of persecuted Christians. Films such as The Passion of the Christ and Silence address themes of faith under pressure and the cost of spiritual commitment. Through these narratives, the audience is invited to reflect on issues of faith, sacrifice, and the fight against oppression. These works are more than entertainment. They serve as vehicles for a profound message about the importance of religious freedom. Beyond the seventh art, Literature also plays a crucial role in representing Christian persecution. Books that narrate stories of martyrs or biographies of historical figures who faced oppression offer an intimate look at the human experience amid suffering. These stories capture not only the pain of persecution, but also the strength and resilience of faith, inspiring readers and promoting empathy and understanding. Visual art, through paintings and exhibitions, also contributes to the discussion around Christian persecution. Works depicting scenes of martyrdom or symbolizing the struggle for faith help perpetuate the memory of these events and raise public awareness. These artistic endeavors often transcend cultural and linguistic barriers, becoming a universal means of communication about justice and human rights issues. Finally, representation in culture and media not only informs, but also incites action. When the public is exposed to persecution stories, it can generate solidarity and mobilization in defense of religious rights. Art and media are not just reflections of reality. They have the power to shape it, influence opinions, and perhaps even promote significant social changes. Thus, over the centuries, Christians have persevered amidst adversity, demonstrating an unwavering faith that teaches us much even today. Think for a moment. What would you do if you were tested for your beliefs? Would your convictions be strong enough to face persecution? These stories of courage and resilience remind us that true faith often requires sacrifices. As we reflect on the true story of persecuted Christians, it is vital to remember that their struggle is not just a part of the past, but a present reality in many places around the world. Have you ever thought about how you can make a difference? How can we be the voice of those who have no say? Be inspired by these examples of faith and courage and ask yourself, how can you apply these teachings in your life? What would you do to support those who still face persecutions today? The journey of faith is full of challenges, but it is also filled with hope. May we always remember the legacy of those who came before us and together continue to spread the message of love and compassion. After all, the true story of persecuted Christians is also the story of all of us.